Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me, uh, chatting to you a little bit about uh, legs. Okay, so I have rafters in my house and I have a belt or like a really, really long sort of like a cloth. So I'm using that as a strap. And as you see, I've got a pillow here underneath my feet to keep them at an angle. Uh, here's another angle of what's happening with the hands there. They're holding onto the straps hanging from above. So this is really effective to try to get the calf muscles and things to expand because sometimes we uh, lose that flexibility or that mobility if we wear high heels all the time and uh, because of other type of stuff as well, you know. So uh, yeah, just uh, very simple swings. You can do also side to side, you know, it's really good for your sides. Um, yes, so this is the same strap. Uh, I'm using here just for some uh, leg stretches. So these are more active leg stretches uh, standing on one leg. And uh, yeah, it really helps uh, with dancing later if you are interested in learning how to dance. And also, yes, uh, bending the leg to make it stronger here. Uh, the strap I got from Bali uh, it was actually a belt from a dress. Uh, so the material is very soft and it's a little bit stretchy. So yes, yeah, one of my favorite items in my wardrobe. I use it for many things. That's awesome. Uh, the dress is gone, <laughs> but but the belt stayed. Um, anyway, so uh, legs. Uh, talking about high heels, I suppose. Uh, high heels are very bad for you. So if you haven't worn them and you think you should, don't wear them. So uh, I used to uh, model when I was a child, when I was 14, when I was a teenager. And that's when I started working with high heels and they really uh, stuffed me up. And uh, eventually I uh, danced for 12 years in high heels. And that was really, that was really damaging to my whole body. So uh, just using the strap though, this was not necessary. It was, yeah, to uh, keep posture up and then bending down. So here I'm just basically doing some um, improvised motions uh, to somehow shake the stress or move the stress out of my body. Um, trying to find that uh, primal energy inside the skeleton or like the nervous tissues to be able to move stress on and try to remember how to stand properly. So this is quite hard to do with uh, straight knees. So uh, trying to train the knees to do the right thing and uh, using some primal uh, motions and shakes uh, quite informally to uh, basically try and loosen up the the memories in the body so trying to lose that grip of control that the muscles have shaking sometimes helps and uh, yes um, I'm quite enjoying this you know I think this was actually very joyful for me to do so it's not too stationary. Uh, during yoga, these are very stationary moves. Um, I find it very uh, suffocating sometimes. So the idea is to keep the legs straight and uh, try to um, make sure that the body remembers to keep them straight so that the muscles don't grip. So what you do sometimes when you wear high heels is uh, you lose the mobility or the stretch in your back of leg muscles so your back of your calves and back of your thighs start to get rigid and eventually what it does is it pushes the butt upwards and also that um, uh, the muscle and the small of your back starts to contract um, yes so I'm using uh, primitive motion primal motion to uh, try and teach the body how to be uh, that was uh, really cool to do. I really enjoyed it, actually. So trying to break into the legs is hard. Um, doing a certain type of uh, downward dog pose. So this is not the official yoga pose. Um, it was uh, good to do it. And uh, like once the pain got too much in my legs, I would stop moving forward. But yeah, usually with downward dog, I can't keep the heels down. So uh, yeah trying to dilute the tension in the legs with some Slavic squatting, a little bit of dancing there. Uh, okay, so this sequence basically is I'm trying to lower my body towards my feet. This is like a yoga thing, um, but what I find really uncomfortable and uneasy is that in the yoga class you can't really move, you can't really do what you want. So here basically I'm playing around with what the body wants to do because sometimes the 
leg is the leg, yeah. So we're working on legs, but there's so many different tissues in the spine and the body that I don't want to comply. And then like moving informally actually helps to teach your body things, you know, because it doesn't want to learn from military application. Like it's not just about lean down, you know, lean down and touch your toes. It's um, a little bit heavy for the body to learn new tricks, especially if you're like almost 40. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that was quite fun to do. Just basically uh, try and relax. Here I totally like almost like lost consciousness or lost grip or, on what my body was doing. And that was good. Sometimes you basically have to relax very, very uh, intensely. Also today I was listening to a beautiful track. It was like a beautiful um, Indian music, classical Indian music with like sitars and uh, drums and things. It was really nice and calming today. I might also post the track um, in the caption section. So uh, yes, just you know, this kind of like more classical yoga stuff, trying to basically uh, extend and increase flexibility in that leg. And as you can see, my legs are not very developed, like say in comparison to my arms and my stomach, they're quite feeble, uh, which is what actually, um, yeah, a certain type of lifestyle will do, also stationary lifestyles and, and such. So basically, uh, using the strap, this is really fun to do, uh, to try and maneuver the leg. So why I'm maneuvering the leg is because I find that on different tiny little micro angles, it feels uh, different things. And uh, it's not just about up to, or to the side or backwards, you know, try to play with your angles uh, because you might be surprised as to what you find um, hiding in your body as like micro angles. So basically seeing what the body wants to do and it's going through like its own kind of like a little soul key motion and it's trying to, it's like rebelling against what I'm doing. It doesn't want to feel the feeling of leaning down. It doesn't want to do it. So basically respecting that it does help also, but also that the body isn't really caring for the motion, but that's okay. So basically playing with the curve of the back, you know, it looks very circusy and clownish perhaps, but um potentially but it was fun to do also like slightly leaning to the side for some reason that leg had more trouble than the other and just basically trying to rock it out here uh, this was actually very effective uh, rocking it out was more effective uh, effective than just leading and just uh, playing with the different um, angles I suppose uh, this was a very good also like the spine got to relax onto the floor and it somehow sent different impulses of trust uh, to the legs or to the body to just allow the legs to be like at this new angle uh, because usually yeah my toes have been trained to point you know like if you wear high heels for a really long time it just really stuffs up your whole your whole system and also the digestive system I've got to say because if you can imagine it um, pulls all of those muscles upwards and contracts certain muscles so uh, the digestive power is not as strong as it should be and also quite a lot of people uh, that are accustomed to wearing high heels for a long time they lose their willpower incredible can you imagine like they lose their willpower so here basically I'm uh, playing around with different angles uh, yeah with the other leg and kind of like uh, seeing what the micro adjustments or micro movements can do and then you know having a little bit of fun with that leg there yeah but as you can see in comparison to my arms my legs are a lot weaker See, it's like a, a, like a little girl's leg, you know, like, like a teenager's leg, child's leg. So um, I'm learning how to, how to do this from scratch. Um, okay, so uh, trying to balance the body and trying to get it into just the one, one seed. Like I, I kind of feel like it's like a seed position because like everything comes back to one. Yeah, I'm doing some of these sort of like uh, slow movements to try and help the body relax and accept the newly made change and then playing around with the, f with the legs and I asked like I really intended like I want to get flexibility in my legs you know so here is just like some very random result <laughs> uh, just some idea of moving around with a stretched leg it was actually very fun this was really really fun to do I actually already started to feel the euphoria so from getting a little bit more mobility and uh, love into my legs has really helped me feel better about myself, better about my heart, better about my soul. This was really, really helpful. It was quite painful and uh, a little bit difficult to concentrate, but it was uh, very good. Um, this was really helpful. Also, I have to say, 
I have like a lot of chronic pain. I'm not I'm not whining here. Uh, I have a lot of chronic pain from um, the high heels because, um, as I said earlier, what happens is they contract the uh, lower spine, so the lower spine doesn't have as much power force and of course like you know as I said earlier willpower can also just basically go out the window for people that wear high heels all the time it's like a little method of control definitely so um, I have a lot of lower back pain and basically I'm trying to find out how to shoot that new consciousness or like that new ideology into my lower spine because you see like if your legs are not functioning well you really lose yourself like um, part of being human a giant part of being human is being able to really use your legs your legs ladies are not just for high heels and like sexy stockings your legs are actually for for you know for many things like mobility example you know traveling uh, for work you know it's like you lose your legs, you lose everything, well not everything, but it's hard, you know, like, yeah, so basically trying to balance my legs here, it was fun to do as well, I like these balancing positions, as you can see from my previous uh, materials, sometimes trying to get the trust into the legs, you know, a little backward shuffle there, it was fun to do, um, anyway, uh, so yeah, training the legs from the inside out and uh, trying to grow new tissues, trying to help them learn new things at almost 40 is fun. Okay, so uh, yeah, here are some twists, basically the hands grip behind, yeah, and then just a child's position, two variations of it. I'm going through these quite fast, this was a whopping two hour session, almost two hours, so yeah, I had to really cut down the poses to as short as I could get them basically just to show you my process here I'm basically trying to crack into the lower spine I'm trying to help the lower spine but I'm still also working on the legs um, so the sequence is um, quite fun this was really fun to do I really loved it um, about breaking into the front thigh and also like the proportion of how much energy is uh, shared between like the different muscles of the body like really changes here so there's a huge um, stretch going from the lower stomach muscles like you know down to the ligaments you know and I do definitely like to move so this is the thing that I feel um, I really really got to love with my practice is that I don't just sit there like everybody else I like to move and uh, then I also notice there's a lot of gaps in my body like I notice where there's pain and I move through it you know so yeah that was uh, good to do it was very easy this is very easy you know it looks kind of like a ninja but it's uh, actually very very simple to do you know very good so basically moving the leg in different places as you can see trying to fix those little spots because it's not just an up and down thing you know there's like a whole range of motion that you need to be able to use your legs of course trying to keep it straight now it's getting straighter the legs are getting straighter they're not so stubborn with me which is good and uh, noticing like a change in mood so here just like uh, cleaning up those things inside really helped me um, you know get in on that uh, chi so there's a lot more chi in my body just because the legs are listening now so this was really painful as you can see by the face and it's good to have a like a little moan and a sulk and when you actually understand you like come to your uh, to your end you know to your wits end it's, it's good to to understand that you know where the body has problems it keeps you really humble I think it's really really important to know where your body has problems and to admit it even if it hurts um, because then you you see where you want to go and where you need to be like a very odd little twist there But that was really fun to do as well Fun to do fun to do it was fun to do. This was a fun. This is a fun day <laughs> Yeah, so um, yep Playing around with that little foot Trying to get it to do stuff This took ages Yeah and the track was nice also I'll uh, post it in the caption as I said before so that was it so basically now um, I'm trying to go directly opposite so this is like me shaking it out and going to the more primal motion primal motion and I'm basically shaking out my spine as the legs expand um, into the corners of the mat trying to get some movement in there and feel more 
connected and more more conscious and like exploring the different changes in the body this is really effective also just to strengthen and to stretch out the legs this is painful you guys this is really painful it's really good for the ladies it's really really good to um open the lower chakras that was really cool so um sitting down relaxing some kind of uh, amoeba like you know, slow movement really helps you detect changes in your body and also help you understand what has actually happened because you have to have this sometimes like soulful time to just sentiment over your body because sometimes like tissues break down like some of my fascia, yeah, the connective tissue is broken down by those motions so you have to understand a lot of also yin practice like if you really want to get a stretch in your body uh, you will break down tissue so uh, if you break down tissue that your body made, of course, it's going to have a little bit of a sad day. So also, um, yes, this was interesting. Uh, basically trying to roll the body upon the feet. That was really cool. Uh, that helped me direct more energy into my legs and into my sacrum. That was really, really cool. And then trying to basically metabolize any blocks or any ends, you know, where my body is like, oh no, this is it, I can't do anymore. So basically trying to metabolize any blocks or endings, uh, as weird as this looks, uh, this was really, um, really good to do and it helped me uh, absorb, like, it kind of feels like it helped me absorb matter. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah, some side to side. La -di da Yep. So this like pelvic roll to the head like that, um, it really helps you associate to yourself because all of those little discs get kind of touched. So um, when you're going for a big change in your body, it's good to remember it and uh, movements like flow through your spine helps you memorize uh yeah negative things as well sometimes it's true uh this was uh quite good i uh try to get into my spine and uh see what it does with the little micro leans there's quite a lot of pain here going through the spine and through the you know where the legs connect to the body so um, i have chronic pain actually chronic fatigue because of that pain so once again if you are a young lady Please don't wear high heels, they're really, really bad for you. If your daughter or neighbor is wearing high heels, you know, please tell them no, because this breaks your body, you know, so you're looking at years of damage from high heels. And then, of course, like a stationary lifestyle. And if you look at what I do, I work as a psychic, so most of my life is stationary, and before I used to work as a... Um, as, as like a, like an artist you know I used to be an illustrator and you know you don't want to do that so stationary lifestyles and high heels you know looking pretty on the side of the road please don't be that person you want to walk you want to breathe if you want to breathe you need to use your legs and your feet um, you'll be so much better off um, walking breathing traveling it's an important part of life so a um, little lecture just for you I don't know why this happened. Basically, I started uh, maybe channeling the music I was listening to because I got really into it. My body was isolating different parts and it was shaking and uh, kind of trying to, I think, um, understand itself. It was kind of just like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't be so serious. Because, you know, like when you're working with something in your body that doesn't really want to work with you, you get kind of stressed out and get possessive about it. So um, I had a little shake and then I noticed that there was... Uh, <clears throat> like kind of like an animal element to it or like an unconscious element so I did this eight like for ages and I didn't know what I was doing but I was like okay it's my hips it's my chest or it's my it's my head um, so that was interesting so basically just uh, going through all the shaking basically trying to not feel so serious and not to dwell on the results I think that's what it was and it's hard not to uh, but yeah so here's the lean I did in the previous video some time ago, I think in a second or third. And it's really, really good for getting the pain out of the bottom of the spine. There's a video on pain I did like second or third, I don't know. But yeah, so some twists always go hand in hand with spinal healing and leg stuff. Sitting there looking a little weird. 
trying to activate the pose, like if I'm going to sit there, at least I'm going to do something with my body. Pull up the legs, good for uh, the spine, good for the spleen. Sitting down, happy baby, went backwards. Um, so I love these things. I think in yoga class, I don't do them enough. I usually like skip really fast through these, but I love them. So one of the things I love is when you're rolling down back onto the floor and you get to basically touch every single disc with the floor or you get to touch the floor with every single disc, I feel that's really helpful. It's been really, really helpful for me in my practice. Just very slowly like massaging every spine and understanding where everything is. And sometimes you're laying there, you get like big realizations or feelings. Uh, playing around with some straighter legs, you know. Also, it's really good for the spine at the top, you know, like where the neck is, like the top of your spine. A lot of stress lives there. Also, Cushing's disease. If you ever have a hump at the top of your back, um, that's not what you think. It's not just like this or that. It's like uh, there's a certain sediment. I used to actually have this, believe it or not. You don't even have to be overweight to have it. Uh, there's a certain sediment um, that um, accumulates around the top of your spine, you know, in the first disc of the, um, of the neck, uh, up the top there, where your shoulders are. And it is because you have a toxin and uh, there is like no way of really healing it unless you cleanse your liver. It's a special type of thing. It's pretty sick. So people that have double chins, if, as if, you, no if you notice, I got a little double chin sometimes. I'm going to do a liver detox next. So I'm going to share everything about detoxing with you too. So basically uh, here trying to counteract the um, one movement with, with another. So the, that um, movement that I'm doing here, bending the legs towards the floor eventually, is good uh, if you counteract it with the bridge position. Yeah. It was really, re this really satis this is my favorite pose, really satisfying. And then trying to get all the discs. Sometimes they click and it's like, oh my gosh, I clicked my own back. That's really cool. And then going back into another bridge position. Yeah, ain't what it used to be. Ain't what it used to be. Ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Respect your youth if you're a young person uh, watching this. My gosh, you got time. You got so much time. Yeah, I'm almost 37 uh, here in, in a few days. Okay, so this was uh, also very effective. So keep on coming back to that. And then like doing some variations. You know, sometimes people like doing this because it's just fun to do. It's like the feeling of weightlessness in the legs, you know, like just classic yoga stuff. A little boring, I know, but it's just nice. You know, get kind of spaced out by the end of your practice and it's just a nice kind of like spacey thing to do. Well, here's um, the fun part. I've been trying to imagine how I would... Um, carry these. I've been doing um, a bit of bolster stuff in previous videos. So basically this is really good. Um, if you have a tall bo uh, bolster like this, you can make a bolster, you can use your couch or your bed or something. Explore it because see, um, here you can do very much also damage. If you're not prepared, please understand, you have to be prepared for this. If you are like a yoga instructor, for example, this is awesome. But like say if you've never danced, never used your body, um, this could be a damaging if you don't really know what you're doing. So the reason why I'm doing it is because I really, really want to reach into my spine, into my body and crack that um, disc that keeps on not working. You know, So basically it's just um, using movements to try and crack into the discs. And I, as you can see, I'm sort of moving lower and lower and lower and trying to activate different parts of the spine um, so using the legs is kind of like a way to try and get into those into those discs um, so where like the body bends that's the disc and it's going to get activated or is going to get uh, changed or shifted a little bit so not for all people but if you're somebody who is uh, Conscious and can hold their body together. This is really, really good for you. If you want, yeah, passive leans. Very good. Very, very good. This is very easy to do. Passive leans. Not for everybody, but yeah. That's really, really cool. Um, straightens out your spine pretty good. Self-adjustments. So the motion, I find, is uh, very healing. Yeah, what else can I say? Okay, bolster. If you want to start, um, okay, see how many cushions I have. Only use one. Of these cushions you know don't use four 
So yeah, this is kind of like the extended, extended bolster. And as you can see, I'm moving down the bolster, so I keep on finding yeah different places in the spine and adjusting them separately, one after the other. So basically, I had a little bit of uh, pain in my neck, so the spine is feeling good. Uh, by this point, uh, the lower spine felt really nice, uh, and the legs felt fine. So uh, kind of sleepy motions to get the neck feeling better, relaxing, and trying to calm down. Relaxing the body, relaxing the, the spine. It's not needed. You don't need to do this at the end of your practice. Completely not needed. But, uh, yep. Basically, that was that. Just sat there. Well, that's a good way to do it. Like, just completely relax. And then, yeah, cool. You know, rolling the shoulders. Getting ready for other things to do. You know. Not feeling worn out. Not feeling angry or sad or anything yeah so that was that